All right, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, welcome back. It's me, Addy, again, and I hope you guys are doing all right. Today, I'm really, really excited for this video because it's going to be a bit of a different one. I'm going to be doing none other than a short, spoiler-free review of the Death Stranding official novelization. That's right, you heard me correctly. Hideo Kojima's 2019 hit video game Death Stranding was recently adapted into novel format by fantastic author Hitori Nojima. It wasn't long ago that I saw a tweet put out by the legend Hideo Kojima himself about these novels, which is where I found out about them. As soon as I saw that tweet, I immediately threw these bad boys into my Amazon cart and got them shipped over and had the absolute pleasure of reading the heck out of them. So after having gotten my hands on both of these volumes, here I am now having decided that there's no better way to celebrate the upcoming release of Death Stranding Director's Cut Edition than by reviewing them. So for those of you who don't know, as a recap, Death Stranding is my third favorite game of all time. I absolutely love this game. I love, love, love this beautiful, awe-inspiring, original, and mind-bending post-apocalyptic setting that Hideo Kojima created with his 2019 masterpiece. I very quickly fell in love with the message of the game, what it stood for, and its theme of connection, right? The way in which this theme of connection permeates the entire gameplay experience, the narrative, and the journey of its characters was one that I could just resonate with so much and it didn't take much for me to, to fall in love with it all and for this game to be placed within my top three of all time. There's also a lot of nostalgia associated with this game for me. It was the very first game I streamed on Twitch back in 2019, and I played it for a second time off-stream during the pandemic in 2020 when it got ported over to the PC. It really did help me through some rough patches in my life, and for that I'm grateful. If you want to see a more detailed video I made on this game, and why it means so much to me, then you can feel free to check that out. I will leave the link to both that and my Twitch channel over in the description. But without further ado, let's get into this quick review. Uh, that rhymed. Irritable rhymes. And uh, don't worry, there won't be any spoilers in this video. Uh, so in a nutshell, I love these books. I thought that they were fantastic overall. As a huge fan of the video game, these were much appreciated from my point of view, and I really did enjoy reading through them. Now granted, I did read the English localization of these books because, I'm sorry, I don't speak Japanese. I'm sorry, I don't speak Japanese. But I could certainly tell that Nojima's appreciation for Kojima's original source material and his writing style really did shine through here. It was excellent. I really enjoyed it. Now, both volumes are a one-to-one -one adaptation of the original video game, each approximately uh, 350 pages long, and they closely follow all of its events and story beats with very, very few deviations. We yet again follow the story of Sam Porter Bridges in a desolate America, plagued by the souls of the dead, yet this time with a unique twist. Whereas the video game explores the world of Death Stranding through Sam's perspective as we control him throughout the game, the books opt to not only illustrate this world to us through his lens, but also through the perspective of several other major characters, even individuals who are NPCs in the game. This is where the books truly shine in my opinion, as they shed light on aspects of the game that may not have been allotted much screen time or exploration outside of Sam's journey, and really allows us as the readers to gain a deeper insight into the lore and world building of Death Stranding. That said, a lot of concepts that may have been difficult or confusing to follow from the game due to the largely mystifying nature of Kojima's work are definitely expanded upon and made a little easier to follow, which I really appreciate. The book does a very good job of explaining the lore and the premise of Death Stranding's post-apocalyptic world and characters, which makes me really happy, right? Since now a lot of people who are unable to play the video game still get the opportunity to jump into its incredible world in novel format. And trust me, this is a world that you don't want to miss. The only downside of these books that I can think of is that while they are exceptionally written and are a faithful recapturing of the video game, it's impossible for them to truly capture the scale, emotional intensity, and cinematic quality that the game has, which are incredibly important and defining aspects of Death Stranding, in my opinion. For example, there's a scene in the beginning of the game where Sam is traveling up to an incinerator during a very emotional mission that the player needs to undertake, and the cinematic direction in that moment of the game is nothing short of magical. The way that the artist Low Roar's music kicks in, with the camera pan zooming out to show the player the scale of the world, and what Sam needs to do, 
is so incredibly moving and something that I never expected the book to replicate and it understandably didn't. Um, and then there's a scene at the end of the game that moved me to tears, uh, really the only ending in a game that has made me cry before. Without getting into spoilers, the incredible performances of Norman Reedus and Mads Mikkelsen really sell that scene and with that on-screen presence and energy obviously lacking in the books, that moment comes nowhere close to being as powerful in written format. What I am trying to get at with all of this is that the definitive way to experience Death Stranding will forever and always remain the video game. There's no way to truly recapture the magic of that world through any other medium. And this is why I highly recommend playing the video game before you read the books, if you do decide to. And that brings us to the moment you've all been waiting for, which is the question, should you read these books? And my answer, absolutely. While the best way to experience Death Stranding may be the video game, I'm so grateful that these pieces of art exist anyway. And if you are a fan of Death Stranding, you owe it to yourself to pick these bad boys up. I got them for about 20 bucks each on Amazon, so that's $40 in total, plus a little bit of tax. Um, and to those of you who have no interest in playing the video game, but would still like to see what this incredible world is about and maybe even jump into it, I'd still highly recommend these for you too. Happy reading, guys. I'm giving Hitori Nojima's Death Stranding, the official novelization, a solid 9 out of 10. They are a damn good retelling of the game, and while they don't recapture the emotional intensity of the game due to its obvious cinematic flair, they serve as a shining example of how to adapt a beloved piece of fiction into literature. That's gonna be the end of this video, guys. I had a lot of fun doing something different here, like I said at the beginning, and I can't wait to make more content for you guys on YouTube and continue our stream dream over on Twitch. And I also can't wait for the director's cut of Death Stranding on PS5 when it comes out next month, right? It's gonna be incredible, right? I, I just can't wait, it's gonna be so good. Uh, but until then, have a fantastic one, guys. And as always, keep on keeping on. I'll see you guys later. Thank you so much.